All right, thank you everybody for the little break. Needed to munch on a granola bar and get some water. Um, also change batteries. Uh, my uh, smartphone is performing rather well. Uh, I've got it uh, tapped into uh, an external battery source, which has been going strong since 7. It's now uh, 9.32 Pacific Standard Time. This is John Perulis. Uh, we're coming at you live from Terminal 5 in Seattle, where a large group of protesters is successfully uh, shut down operations at Terminal 5 to tend to the huge shell drill rig that's parked at the pier, the Polar Pioneer. Polar Pioneer is uh, attempting to drill wells, in, or exploratory wells in the Arctic Sea this summer. Actions like this can cause delays that can shut the drill operation down. That's the goal of the people here. This is John Perlis, KPFA 94.1, Berkeley, California. Please support the station. Call 510-848-6767. It's a great station. It's doing great work like this. Please support it. The only police I see here are bike police, and as you can see, they've got their helmets off, they're socializing with themselves. It's a very peaceful group. Are we cool? Yeah, did we get watered and fed? Are we taking care of ourselves? There's news stations. Just to test the crowd. Can I get a show, no? Many reporters wandering around, and they're staying with it. All right, here's what I'd like to get. I wanted to tell you, we're planning on being down at uh, the Gates Foundation over the Folk Life Festival okay. with signage, and so if you'd like to come, come down. Get me, I'm going to tape this and then... Okay. Uh, Good morning, okay. everybody. Good morning. I'm going to sing a song. Uh, this is called Salmon Come Home, and uh, I wrote this about uh, an Athabascan, small Athabascan village in Alaska where they're fighting to stop uh, a coal mine from being dug in the Chewitna River. It's a uh, related project uh, to the Pebble Mine, which you may be familiar with. But uh, the fight against fossil fuels, coal and oil, is a worldwide, uh, is a, is a worldwide fight. And Basically, the reason we're here with this uh, crazy uh, oil rig right in back of us is because we are in the midst of in phenomenal industrial overreach. And uh, basically, they're willing to uh, compromise entire communities, uh, endanger communities, and destroy entire economies to get, this, get, their, get their oil to the market. And our region is particularly... Uh, well positioned, uh, Bill McKibben said that the Pacific Northwest, Washington, Oregon, and British Columbia, the greater Salish Sea region, we can do more possibly than any other region in the world to slow carbon emissions. And the way we can do that is by operating as a cork, not the most exactly the most romantic way to think of your oneself, but if we stop the coal and uh, no, I should talk. If we stop the coal uh, trains and the oil trains, that would put a stop on the export from of North American fossil fuels to Asia. And we are, we are well on our way to doing exactly that. Three years ago, three years ago, there were six proposed coal ports, new coal ports in Washington and Oregon. Today, there are two. Four down two to go and the two that are left the two that are left in Bellingham and Longview are on their last legs 
the largest investors in the in the Bellingham one have pulled out and that is all this is all happening because of people power because of people standing up just like this and we are frightening the investors and they are pulling out we are also frightening our politicians and they're realizing that to get elected when people organize and vote that is actually more powerful than the the money that the oil industry is polluting our democracy with. So this is not just a fight for the environment, this is not just a fight for climate change, this is a fight for the survival of our democracy, and that is why the oil companies and the coal companies are pariah companies. We all use power, we all use oil, but when they poison our democracy by flooding it and trying to compromise it, that's where we have to take a stand or we won't be able to do this sort of thing anymore. Uh, this, this song is about uh, the fight to stop the Chwitna mine. It's called Salmon Come Home. And uh, when we do this, we're also, this is, we're fighting for the native peoples. This is a human rights issue. Okay, if this goes on up there, and th if there's an oil spill, God forbid, think it's going to destroy people's food sources. So, and it, it's also a human rights issue for us, for our salmon here. Salmon come home again and again since the beginning of time, beginning of when we've been living here. We've been living here forever. The salmon come home again and again since the beginning of time, the beginning of when we've been living here. We've been living on this land forever. And then the Russians came for the fur and ground where they built log forts and we burned them down then the great flu came taking old and young we gathered who was left and we begin again the salmon come home again and again since the beginning of time, the beginning of when we've been living here. We've been living here forever. The salmon come home again and again since the beginning of time, the beginning of when we've been living here. We've been living on this land forever. Then the oil rigs came, promising us jobs. Leaving oil steam as we carry on. Then the loggers came, taking the great trees, leaving mountains bare, leaving muddy streets. The salmon come home again and again since the beginning of time, beginning of when we've been living here. We've been living here forever. Salmon come home again and again since the beginning of time, the beginning of when we've been living here. We've been living on this land forever. Now they come for the coal underneath our river to destroy our home, take our children's future. We are one small town. We are one proud people. We are one with salmon, we are one with eagles, we are one small town, we are one proud people, we are still surviving, we are still surviving. I do not believe Creator wants this to happen. I do not believe Creator wants this to happen. I do not believe Creator wants this to happen. I do not believe Creator wants this to happen. Salmon come home again and again since the beginning of time, the beginning of when. We've been living here, we've been living here forever. The 
salmon come home again and again since the beginning of time, beginning of when we've been living here. We've been living on this land forever. We've been living here. We've been living on this land forever. The salmon come home again and 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 again Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thanks so much for being here today. Uh, we are part of a, a growing movement. It's really a nascent movement. Uh, just this spring, uh, there have been sit-ins in colleges and universities all over the country pushing the colleges to divest from fossil fuel companies. Okay? Now, it's great that our mayor has taken a strong stand on this and that Seattle, at the city council people are here, but Seattle has yet to divest from fossil fuel companies, okay? It's easy for local government to do foreign policy in the media, but the rubber hits the road. Is Seattle gonna pull out of these pariah companies? And we need to keep pressuring our city to do the right thing and divest. And we need to support, we need to support the youngest generations who's, you know, for those of us who are older, we've had, we've been able to live on this beautiful earth for a while. Well, the turn, the change is coming right now. It is arriving. What we've been afraid is going to happen is happening now. We have to stand, we have to stand with the youngest generations who are fighting on the front lines of this. And also one of the fantastic things that, that I found, it's really inspiring, on the coal and oil train issues across the United States, the leadership in that movement are from the, the indigenous nations, the Native Americans are leading that issue. They're, they're touring all over the United States, and uh, it's just fantastic. And that is why we're going to beat the coal ports. That is why we're going to beat the oil companies, because we have the oil trains, the exploding oil trains, because we have a unique coalition that has never existed before. We have the Native American nations, we have the environmentalists, and our friends and neighbors our neighbors who are Republicans and Libertarians are also in on this because this affects our economy. Because Shell and Big Oil are willing to compromise our economy. What happens to our economy if there's one oil spill in the Salish Sea? What happens to Portland's economy if one of those trains wrecks in Columbia? What happens to Bellingham or Mount Vernon or Spokane if one of those trains, God forbid, blows up? They are willing to compromise. They are willing to put our lives, our children, our communities at risk so they can make a few more bucks. Okay, And that is why we have a coalition. We have a winning coalition of small business people, environmental, environmentalists, uh, uh, Native American people, we have a winning coalition and that is why we are beating them and that's why we can make a difference to protect the Arctic. Okay, I've, had the, I've been fortunate enough to tour in the Arctic, I've been all over up there. It is a fragile, beautiful place. Okay, you saw, you saw how long it took for them to plug that horrible oil spill in the Gulf. If, if God forbid this goes through and there's an oil spill, they will not be able to plug it for the entire winter. If, if you've seen the oceans up there, I, I worked as a commercial fisherman, you can't do it. It is wrong. That is why we are here. We are here because we're not going to let that thing out of here. Yeah. This is where we draw the line. Yeah. Shell is wrong and President Obama is wrong to allow that up in the Arctic. There should be no drilling in the Arctic. Yeah. There are safe places, there are safer places to drill while we gradually wean ourselves from our addiction to oil. We have to wean ourselves. You know, we're all still using it, but the Arctic is absolutely the wrong place to do it. So now I'd like to uh, sing a little sing-along. Uh, this has some background vocals, and there is a little dance that goes with the background vocals. And I can see there's a lot of dancers in this crowd. Uh, the police officers are welcome to join in the dance also, if your, if your contract allows for that. My portfolio is high I'm going on vacation Anywhere I wanna Put it on my card I could use a little sun And to see some ancient ruins The pyramids are calling Off to Egypt I will fly 
I go swimming in the big Egyptian river Bathing in the waters of denial The sun is shining down and everybody's happy Bathing in the waters of denial. Okay, that's the chorus, and here are the background vocals. I go swimming in the big Egyptian backstroke, breaststroke, sidestroke crawl. I, I know it looks hard, but we're going to practice, okay? Backstroke, breaststroke, sidestroke crawl. Backstroke, breaststroke, sidestroke, crawl. Very good. I go swimming in the big backstroke, breaststroke. Egyptian backstroke, breaststroke, side stroke, crawl. Very good. Bathing in the waters of denial. He's got it. He's got it all. Okay. He's got it. He's got it all. Let's try that. Bathing in the waters. He's got it. Of denial. He's got it. He's got it all. Okay. Let's try those two lines together. Backstroke, breaststroke, side stroke, crawl. I go swimming in the big backstroke, breaststroke. Egyptian backstroke, breaststroke, side stroke, crawl, bathing in the waters. He's got it. Oh, denial. He's got it. He's got it all. The sun, the sun is shining down. And everybody's happy, happy. He's so happy, happy. All right? All right, everybody happy? Okay. The sun is shining down. This is the easiest line. And everybody's happy, happy. He's so happy, happy, bathing in the water of denial. Let's try the whole thing. Backstroke, breaststroke, side stroke, crawl. I go swimming in the big backstroke, breaststroke. Egyptian backstroke, breaststroke, side stroke, crawl. Bathing in the waters. He's got it. Of denial. He's got it. He's got it all. The sun is shining down. And everybody's happy, happy. He's so happy, happy, bathing in the waters of denial. My job is so secure, and my government is stable. The weather's getting better, a little warmer every year. And now we've got free trade, and everyone will prosper. The locals here are happy, I think I'll have another beer. Let's go swimming out, swimming in the big backstroke, breaststroke. Egyptian backstroke, breaststroke, side stroke, crawl. Bathing in the waters of denial. He's got it, he's got it all. The sun is shining down, and everybody's happy, happy. He's so happy, happy, bathing in the waters of denial. I thought I heard a bomb. It must be a celebration. If anything was wrong, they tell me on TV. Sometimes I am amazed how perfect things are going. I think I'll do some shopping and take a little time for me. Everybody's doing it. We're swimming in the big backstroke, breaststroke. Egyptian backstroke, breaststroke, side stroke, crawl. Bathing in the waters. He's got it. Oh, denial. He's got it. He's got it all. The sun is shining down. And everybody's happy, happy. He's so happy, happy. Bathing in the waters. Oh, denial. Go bathing in the waters of denial. Hey friends, just a quick update and an announcement. This blockade has been going on for over two hours now. And we got plenty more music and fun stuff going on. And we also just heard that folks are still able to join the blockade through West Marginal Way Southwest. 
So if everyone got out their phone and texted a friend and said, party at Terminal 5, we got food, we got coffee, we got bathrooms. <laughs> Let's keep this shut down. And we'll give it back to Dana now. <laughs> but you can't come in through the flyover. You got to come in through West Marginal Way, Southwest. Yes, the uh, the miracle of bathrooms at a rally. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, here's another sing along. Yeah. This is a love song. Fat and docile, big and dumb. They look so stupid, they aren't much fun. Cows aren't fun. They eat to grow, grow to die die to be et at the hamburger fry. Cows well done. Nobody funk it. Nobody knew. No one imagined the great cow guru. Cows are one. He hid in the forest, read books with great zeal. He loved Che Guevara, a revolutionary veal. Cows say tongue. He spoke about justice, but nobody stirred. He felt like an outcast, alone, in the herd. Cow doll drum. He moved, we must fight. Escape or we'll die. Cows gathered around, because the stakes were so high. Bad cow pun. But then he was captured, stuffed into a crate, loaded onto a truck, where he rode to his fate. Cows are bummed. He was a scrawny calf who looked rather woozy. No one suspected he was packing an Uzi. Cows with guns. They came with a needle to stick in his thigh. He kicked for the groin. He pissed in their eye. Cow well hung. Knocked over a tractor and ran for the door. Six gallons of gas flowed out on the floor. Run, cows, run. He picked up a bullhorn and jumped up on the hay. We are free roving bovines. We run free today. We will fight for bovine freedom and hold our large heads high. That's the sing-along part. We will fight for bovine freedom. We will fight for bovine freedom and hold our large heads high and hold our large heads high. We'll run free with the buffalo. We will run free with the buffalo or die. They crashed the gate in a great stampede, tipped over a milk truck, yeah. torched all the feed. Cows have fun. Sixty police cars were piled in a heap, covered in cow pies, covered up deep. Much cow dung. Black smoke rising, darkening the day. Twelve burning McDonald's. Have it your way. We will fight for bovine freedom and hold our large heads high and hold our large heads high. We'll run free with the buffalo. We will run free with the buffalo or die. Cows with guns. The president said, enough is enough. These uppity cattle, it's time to get tough. Cow dung flung. 
The newspapers gloated, folks sighed with relief. Tomorrow at noon, they would all be ground beef. Cows on buns. The cows were surrounded. They waited and prayed. They mooed their last moves. They chewed their last hay. Cows outgunned. The order was given to turn cows to whoppers, enforced by the might of 10,000 coppers. But on the horizon, surrounding the shoppers, came the deafening roar of chickens in choppers. <laughs> we will fight for oh my freedom. Cows with guns. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. You're awesome. I love that you got some aerobics in with the front crawl, the, uh, the front stroke. Backstroke. I'm sorry, I don't have a very good memory, but thank you. You're right. <laughs> all right, thank you all for being here. I'm going to be introducing our next speaker. She came all the way from New Orleans just to be for, here for this action. She works and organizes with people who live near a refinery. Yeah, a refinery. And she's going to say a few words to you all today. Please welcome Anne. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Ann Rolfus and I'm with a group called the Louisiana Bucket Brigade in New Orleans and we work with people who live next to the 17 oil refineries in Louisiana. Up and down the Mississippi River, we got oil. And so I've come here to grab some of what y'all got and take it back home because we need this spirit of resistance. Uh, I'm just going to walk y'all through time a little bit. Uh, two weeks ago I was standing outside of a Shell tank farm on the Mississippi River, we had a group of people up on the levee because their neighborhood of St. Rose, Louisiana is being polluted day in, day out. Um, it's a community mostly African-American, but some white families live there also, as close for, as from here to that building to a big polluting shell tank farm. And people are getting sick, children are having asthma attacks. And I'm pretty sure that if Shell can't control a tank farm on land, that it has no business ramming its drill into the Arctic. Five years ago, at this very moment, the oil was still gushing from the BP well, which was a horrible experience, of course. And the way that that's explained in Louisiana is that BP is a rogue company, that the oil industry is wonderful, that the environment and the oil industry have coexisted peacefully for 50 years, but BP is a rogue company. But in fact, I think it's a little bit larger than that. There is a rogue around here, but it's the entire oil and fossil fuel industry. It's a rogue industry. And if you can't stop and cap a, a spewing well in the Gulf of Mexico, where the well is accessible, the waters are warm, then there is no chance of stopping a tragedy in the Arctic. That's right. Yeah. Ten years ago, uh, we were welcoming Hurricane Katrina. And one of the reasons that Hurricane Katrina was so devastating for our region is because we had very little wetland protection. The wetlands is what buffers a storm. Think about it. If there's a big wave coming in, the wetlands can keep it away from where we live. But the oil industry for the last 50 years has been digging canals and digging uh, ways for its pipelines. And when they dug those canals, when they got the permits to do so, Shell included, they signed permits saying that they promised that they would dig those canals, but then they would go back and fill them in so that we would still have our wetlands and would we, still, uh, we would still be protected. Now, I'm going to give you all a little quiz. Do you all think, knowing what you know about the oil industry, do you think they honored their permit and went and backfilled those canals? No. no. Shell, no. And so today in Louisiana, we're vulnerable. They violated their permits, 
And the reason that Hurricane Katrina devastated us was because of the oil industry. 200 years ago, I've told you all about sad things, but here we have some hope. 200 years ago, over 200 years ago, was the slave revolt of 1811. Not many people have heard about it, but it's the largest slave revolt in U.S. history. And enslaved men and women who faced much greater odds even than we do with this giant rig. People who lived in chains, freed themselves of them, marched up the Mississippi River toward New Orleans with the objective of liberating New Orleans and themselves from slavery. Slavery was a dominant system. It controlled our economy, it controlled the politics, and no one imagined that it could be beat. But we have the inspiration of those enslaved people who stood up to that system, and by God, we are standing up to this corrupt fossil fuel system. So I ask y'all to send me off today. In Louisiana, people understand because of BP and because of Katrina, there actually is a new consciousness. I grew up there. I moved home in 2000 from the West Coast. And from 2000 till today, I have seen that people understand things a little bit differently than they used to. We understand that the oil industry is, is a problem. We just need to take the next step to do what we're doing here today. So please send me off with a spirit to take this back to Louisiana so we can shut down this corrupt industry there. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna do a little chat. Move, Shell, get out the way. Get out the way, Shell, get out the way. I said move, Shell, get out the way. Get out the way, Shell, get out the way. Move, Shell, get out the way. Get out the way, Shell, get out the way. Move, Shell, get out the way. Get out the way, Shell, get out the way. Move, Shell, get out the way. Get out the way, Shell, get out the way. I know a few people have migrated down there, which is totally cool, but us standing our ground right here is also important. Remember, we're trying to shut down the whole terminal, and if we move, we lose ground, and we do not want that. Cool? Yeah! Can I get a show now? Can I get a show now? Thanks, guys. And I wanted to get the sheriff over here. He's going to do a little thing, serving an eviction notice. Whose power? Our power! People power. Whose power? People power. Whose power? People power. We're here to serve notice of eviction to Shell. Yeah, by order of the people of Seattle, this property has been locked this 18th day of May 2015. Any person entering upon these premises without proper written authorization is subject to arrest. Notice is hereby given of seizure for forfeiture of all items stored within the premises based on probable cause to believe that rig was used or will be used with in a violation of our rights to a habitable planet. You shall have a right to a hearing regarding this action. To request a hearing, you must notify the people of the city of Seattle within 45 days of your claim of ownership and right to possession of that fucking rig. <laughs> Failure to file an appeal within 45 days will result in forfeiture to the people. Yeah! This property locked by the authority of the people of Seattle. Yeah! Whose power? Sheriff, thank you. So tell me what you want, what you really want. Justice. Tell me what you need, what you really need. Justice. How are we gonna get it? People power. I say, how are we gonna get it? People power. So tell me what you want, what you really want. Justice. Tell me what you need, what you really need. Justice. How are we gonna get it? People power. Say, how are we gonna get it? People power.
I'm a 55 year old. Okay. John Perul is here with the uh, live video streaming team from radio station KPFA 94.1 in Berkeley, California. We're broadcasting live today from Terminal 5, the entryway to Terminal 5, in Seattle, Washington, in the port of Seattle, where a huge Shell oil rig, the Polar Pioneer, is moored, uh, much to the dismay of the mayor of Seattle, who tried to fight this uh, rig from being uh, uh, towed here and worked on. So the protest group that is formed here today is uh, determined to stop workers from uh, entering to work on the rig. And it looks like we've been successful. It is now 10.08 10, uh, a.m. Pacific time. And uh, it looks like no trucks, no workers have been able to get through here. And this is a work day. This is a Monday. So we have shut this uh, oil rig down at least for one day. I'm sure this is not the end of these actions. So stick with us, support the station, call area code 510-848-6767 and donate some money to the good work that this station does. This station was started by pacifists uh, over 60 years ago, and it was the first station to pioneer call-in radio. Call-in radio is a standard feature of all radio stations. Support KPFA and this great work. We're going to hang out here until it looks like uh, we run out of batteries. Uh, there's no access to electricity here, so everything has to be portable battery power. And it looks like the crowd has thinned out a bit, but there's enough to uh, block workers from coming in. The police right there have uh, a bus that I guess they were going to put arrestees or detainees. Uh, it appears that they're not going to make any arrests. It looks like the police themselves are blocking the entryway. Uh, for workers entering uh, Terminal 5. Terminal 5 was a container port. It's been uh, closed to container operations for remodeling. Uh, the mayor's office of Seattle uh, said that um, the uh, movement of the oil rig at the port is actually uh, affecting uh, jobs at Terminal 5. Uh, more jobs can be had loading and unloading cargo and not working on an oil rig. So the energies to oppose this horrible machine of destruction in one of the most environmentally rich oceans on the Pacific Northwest here is uh, poised to, uh, to stop. Very dangerous waters to drill in. I uh, served with Greenpeace on a few campaigns in the Bering Sea, and in the summertime, the sea was subjected to gales and uh, violent storms. And this is not the place for an oil rig to be drilling. If they spill, you might have heard a speaker a few minutes ago saying that if there is a spill, uh, there's no way to clean it up through the winter, so the oil will keep spilling and polluting, and such a spill would make uh, the BP Gulf spill, uh, the Horizon uh, spill, look like uh, child's play. So, judging from uh, the blockade here, I would say this uh, action today is a success. Thanks for viewing. Thanks to all you who are sticking with this broadcast and uh, uh, supporting it in some way or other. Uh, this is fantastic. Uh, once again, thank you. This is John Perulis broadcasting live 
from Seattle, Washington at Terminal 5 where a huge Shell oil rig, the Polar Pioneer, is tied up. There's another Shell oil rig tied up in Everett, Washington, a bit uh, north of here. It too has a mission to drill in the Arctic, so uh, Shell has an expansive plan uh, to drill. Uh, not too long ago, 30 Greenpeace activists were arrested by Russian authorities trying to block a Gazprom oil drilling platform in that part of the world. Uh, the Arctic is not the place for any uh, drill operations to happen. The captain of that uh, Arctic Sunrise, Peter Wilcox, is a friend of mine. I uh, served with him on the Rainbow Warrior on a number of campaigns. I'm not here as a Greenpeace uh, crewman today, although I support the work of Greenpeace. I am here as a broadcaster for KPFA, radio station 94.1 in Berkeley, California. We have a small uh, video team that puts these live uh, streams together of important actions. And I would say this is uh, a very important action because of the colossal dangers posed by drilling the Arctic. So stay with us. I'm going to keep broadcasting. Uh, if I go down for some reason, it may be because uh, I've lost battery power or I have to stop for a coffee break or something like that. I'm just one guy working on this today, although we do have a team. Uh, shout out to Clark and Steve Zelser and Freewheel and Frank and Carol Wolfley. Uh, we have a fantastic team at KPFA putting these live broadcasts together. Uh, I was told we have somewhere between 50 and 100 viewers today, so that's fantastic. I'd like to thank you all for watching this stream. Uh, I hope you've uh, been entertained and informed and impressed by uh, the level of uh, uh, commitment here and creativity brought to uh, this protest. It was led by uh, Native Americans, a uh, beautiful woman uh, from uh, Alaska, uh, an Inuit, uh, uh, gave this incredible rap speech uh, about um, sp uh, calling forth future ancestors. It's a very interesting concept because we tend to think of ancestors as something uh, from the past, but she projected the uh, ancestor concept into the future where uh, those ancestors are calling for us to make the change and do the right things to stop uh, the destruction of this planet, which is uh, ground zero uh, for that is here today at this uh, shell rig. So I'm going to uh, wander around the crowd some more. And uh, thanks for staying with us. Support the station. 510-848-6767. Berkeley, California. KPFA 94.1. connected to the earth and understand the spiritual reality of how to live on earth, it's likely you will not make it. Everything is spiritual. Everything has a spirit. Everything, everything was brought to you by the creator, the one creator. 
Some people call him God. Some people call him Buddha. Some people call him Allah. Some people call him other names. We call him Compassion. Over 95% of our body is water. In order to stay healthy, you gotta drink some water. This uh, is an interesting group. They've got a gigantic parachute that they painted the earth on, and uh, they're dancing with it, performing with it, being blessed by it. It's a pretty cool thing, pretty cool use for a parachute. Like the human mind, the parachute uh, works best when it is open. A teacher of mine told me that little story a while back. It's a great story. Usually so calm. Yeah. <laughs> hey poodle. Welcome to the protest. Yeah. I used to bring my poodle to protest. Yeah. He's doing okay. It's a people dog. I apologize for forgetting Dana's last name. He's the musician that uh, sings Cows with Guns. He's got a beautiful song. I asked him to sing it. I imagine he may or may not sing it later on uh, about uh, fighting for your country when it's under attack. And who is attacking the country are the people that are deforesting the Northwest here and polluting the oceans and uh, threatening the environment with uh, fossil fuel energy, drilling in dangerous places to drill like the Arctic Ocean. That's why we're here today to say no to shell oil. Shell oil has fingers in many places and sad to say it has a finger in my hometown, San Rafael, California, where a uh, 
an energy company uh, sprouted a few years ago called Marin Clean Energy. Marin Clean Energy prides itself on getting its power from alternatives, although uh, there is a dark side to that, and the dark side is that the parent company of Marin Clean Energy is Shell, is a subsidiary of Shell, with the same Shell oil that we're uh, opposing here today. And Shell uh, supplies, uh, I'm not sure, a percentage, uh, maybe less than half, of Marin Clean Energy's uh, power. So if you're in the uh, North Bay area around Marin, Sonoma, please uh, uh, write or call your uh, board member or Marin Clean Energy and ask them to divest from Shell. Oh, I see Dana there. Uh, he looks like he's ready to go. Well, the crowd has definitely thinned out here, but no matter, uh, the objective has been accomplished. The uh, the port has been shut down, Terminal Five anyway. Nothing's moving. This is the entryway to the actual gate, where the. Uh, Polar Pioneer Shell's gigantic uh, oil rig is sitting. It was towed recently from Port Angeles uh, to the uh, resistance from the mayor's office of Seattle. The mayor of Seattle was opposed to towing the Polar Pioneer here because the um, port uh, wasn't licensed for oil drink rig uh, repair work. It was licensed for the loading and unloading of cargo. So, uh, at any rate, uh, this has a, been a successful day, marked by a peaceful uh, song, dance, and speeches, and the police have stood down. Uh, there are no, absolutely no riot police here. Uh, the police presence I'm seeing is uh, holding back, and a lot, many of them are bike cops. Uh, if you were in the earlier part of this protest, you saw uh, the bike cops escorting the uh, uh, protesters over the overpass, so the Duwamish, excuse me if I'm saying that wrong, people from Seattle, but. Uh, there's a, a river waterway that you have to uh, walk over to get here to this terminal. So they, I did see a, uh, a a work truck arrive, but it was turned away, uh, not by the protesters, but by the police. So uh, not absolutely sure what happened there, but uh, I'm uh, supposing that. Uh, the police said that uh, it was too dangerous uh, to uh, proceed and that other operations were shut down. So some good things going on. There seems to be a festivities happening right now under the giant earth parachute. Once again, a parachute works best when it's open and that's the way a mind works best too, is when a mind is open. People here are asking you to open your minds to the destruction that the oil and fossil fuel extraction world is wreaking on the earth and to support and start thinking about alternatives and giving your energy to efforts to make the change.
uh, broadcast is coming to you over a smartphone with a, a battery booster so that I could keep uh, broadcasting. It's working very well. One of the speakers referred to the coal uh, industry running through Seattle, and uh, it looks like this is a coal train that just uh, pulled up. The, those uh, appear to be the type of cars and transport, although I can't tell what's in them right now. I'll go over and get some more people. Another way of thinking of this protest is that uh, you can say it's how dance shut down an oil rig. Dance and song. This is John Perulis. I'm a member of the live streaming video collective at KPFA. We're all volunteers. I'd like to personally give a shout out to Freewheel and Frank and Carol Wolfley, Steve Zelser, Clark Sullivan, uh, myself, John Perulis. Uh, I'm sure there are other people, Vilma. Uh, we have a lot of supporters at the station. We're trying to get live streaming video off the ground and into people's smartphones. We have about 100 uh, viewers watching this today. I'd like to thank those people. Please support the station also. Area code 510-848-6767. KPFA radio station 94.1 FM, Berkeley, California. Someone raised the pirate flag on the uh, terminal, uh, an earth flag and a pirate flag on the uh, terminal flag post. Kind of neat. The pirate flag uh, or the pirate symbol is also uh, one of the symbols used by Earth First, doing great work in, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Sea Shepherd Society.
Earth First does great work too, of course. Uh, sea Shepherd Society uh, saving the uh, southern seas in Antarctica. So I am, uh, as you can tell, walking back and forth uh, between uh, the groups that are blockading uh, the two streets that lead into this port. Uh, this is Terminal 5 at the Port of Seattle. Uh, I can't see the polar car near well. If you look uh, in the horizon there, uh, you could barely make out the top of it, uh, about a 8 or 1,000 foot, 800 or 1,000 foot drilling tower. So it's within eyesight. Looks like the uh, paddy bus, paddy wagon bus, is not going to be used today.